Now let's look at the narrative writing process. There are several steps that you need to follow. First of all, have a look at the writing topic. Often you will receive a writing prompt or question and also instructions for writing. So if you have a look at this example here called The Box, it's important that you read the topic carefully. Sometimes they'll give you questions to help you think about ideas. So in this case we've got what is inside the box, how did it get there, is it valuable, perhaps it is alive. Now when you're considering these questions, you don't need to answer all of them. It's just really to get you thinking. You can include different details. And then you've got some instructions. So to think about the characters and where they are, the complication or the problem to be solved and how the story will end. And some things to remember. Plan your story before you start. Write in sentences. Pay attention to the words you choose. Your spelling and punctuation and paragraphs. Check and edit your writing when you have finished. Make sure that you address all these elements in the story because they are usually a really good clue to what you're going to be assessed on. So the first step is to plan. And I would encourage you to spend several minutes on the plan. This is where you brainstorm ideas for your story. Think about as many ideas as you can and jot down your ideas using maybe a mind map or a list. So remember, because you're writing a narrative, you need to include several narrative conventions. You need to include a setting. So this could be a beach, home, school, shopping centre or a cinema. You need to include characters. So it could be one character or several characters. Try and keep your characters to a minimum though. So this could be you. So it could be based on one of your own experiences. Include your friends, might be a gang, your parents, a teacher. Often stories have a hero and a villain, so think about that. Stories also have a central conflict or problem. So it could be that in this instance you've found something uh, and the conflict could be should I hand it in to the police. And finally, a story or a narrative has to have a resolution. So this is where the conflict or the problem is resolved. So for example, a secret might be revealed, the box might be returned to the owner. It's important to think about a realistic and satisfying ending. Yeah? So it doesn't have to be a happy ending, but it needs to be satisfying and it needs to be something realistic. Right, now it's time to write. So always look back at your plan while you're writing. So remember you need to establish the point of view. Are you going to use third person or first person point of view? Describe the setting and characters using vivid language. Remember to show the reader. Introduce the problem or conflict. Now avoid too many or too complex conflicts or problems because in this case you want to write for around 40 minutes or so. So try and keep the, com the conflict to one or two at most. The other important thing as you're writing is that you need to reveal your details slowly. Try and create suspense to engage the reader. And as I mentioned previously, try to avoid just telling the reader everything. Rather, show the reader. So if you've got a character who's angry, avoid just saying, you know, Susan was angry because she failed the test. Rather, use descriptive language and dialogue. So it could be, Susan slammed the door and shouted as her mother as she came home from school. I hate school. You know, you can use dialogue in that way. Use transitions so that the reader can follow the story. So your story needs to be coherent, we say. So it should be easy 
for the reader to follow the logic of your story and all the different steps in your story. Use the correct verb tense. So remember, verbs are action words like he walked, he talked, he murmured. But are you going to talk about the past or are you going to talk about the present? Whatever tense you use, try and keep it fairly consistent or you need to be able to manage those shifts in verb tense very carefully. Sentences are also very important. Now, sentences can be simple or complex. They can be long or short. When we write sentences, short sentences are usually useful when you want to give impact. She was angry. He shouted at her. Yeah. Long sentences tend to slow down the pace of your story a little bit more. So think about the effect that you want to create in your story. And finally, you need to write in paragraphs. Try not to write one really long paragraph of dense text. Divide up your ideas into paragraphs. So use, you know, whenever there's a shift in tense, a period, you know, new stage or process, introduce another paragraph. So once you've finished writing your story, it's time to proofread and edit. Try and manage your time so that you've got at least five minutes left at the end to read over your work and check that the meaning is clear and that the ideas flow. Right? So that's important. You're editing and then you proofread. So when you proofread, you look for the little things like spelling, punctuation and grammar. So overall, some key tips about the writing process. Plan before you write. And in your plan, all the key elements of a story must be included. Manage your time. You only have 40 minutes total, usually. You need to write around 500 to 600 words. Write legibly. Don't rush. You don't want the examiner to work too hard or the marker to work too hard to find and understand your meaning and proofread your work. So good luck with the writing process.